In 1995, Warren Buffett shared his three most important investing principles during the Q&A session of Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting. In this clip, Buffett is asked how he estimates the intrinsic value of stocks and how that compares to the intrinsic value calculated by his mentor, Benjamin Graham. And in classic Buffett fashion, he provides clear and timeless advice to investors that we can still use and apply today. This video is useful to you because no matter what type of investor you are, and regardless of your experience level, you can apply these three principles to improve your chances of long-term investment success. And by the end of the video, you'll know how to apply these concepts to your own investments and portfolio. I'm going to play the clip in full, it's just over two minutes, and then we'll break down his comments, including his three key investment principles and how to apply them today. Enjoy. Yeah, we've tried to put in the annual report pretty much how we approach securities. And Book value is not a consideration, virtually not a consideration at all. It, uh, and uh, uh, the best businesses, by definition, are going to be businesses that earn very high returns on on uh, on capital employed over time. So by nature, if we want to own good businesses, we're going to own things that have relatively little capital employed compared to our purchase price. Uh, that would not have been Ben Graham's approach. But Ben Graham was Ben was not working with very large sums of money, and he would not have argued with this approach. He just would have said his was easier, and it is easier perhaps when you're working with small amounts of money. My friend Walter Schloss has hewed much more toward the kind of securities that that Ben would have selected, and uh, but he's worked with smaller amounts of money. He has an absolutely sensational record, and in. It's not surprising to me at all. I mean, when Walter left Graham, though, I, I would have expected him to do well. Uh, but I don't. I don't look at the primary message from our standpoint of Graham really as being in that uh, in anything to do with formulas. In other words, there's three important aspects to it. You know, one is your attitude toward the stock market. That's covered in Chapter Eight of the Intelligent Investor. I mean, if you've got that attitude toward the market. Uh, you start ahead of 99% of all people who are operating in the market, so you have an enormous advantage. Second principle is the margin of, uh, of safety, which again gives you an enormous edge and actually has applicability far beyond just the investment world. Uh, and then the third is just looking at stocks as businesses, which gives you an entirely different view than most people that are in the market. And with those three sort of philosophical benchmarks, uh, the exact evaluation technique you use is not is not really that important because you're not going to go way off the track uh, whether you use Walter's approach or Walter Schloss's or mine or whatever. It's incredible how much knowledge is compressed into those two minutes, so let's unpack some of that and take a deeper look into Buffett's comments. Now, in answering the question and how he determines the intrinsic value of stock, Buffett first starts with a discussion on book value. Now, book value represents a company's assets minus its liabilities and is sometimes referred to as stockholders' equity. Another related concept that wasn't directly discussed is price-to-book ratio. The price-to-book ratio compares a company's market value to its book value, the market value or market capitalization being simply the share price multiplied by the number of outstanding shares. The price-to-book ratio gives you a sense of where the stock is trading relative to the net assets of the company. What's interesting from this clip, and again keep in mind this was back in 1995, is that Buffett places little to no value on book value and hence also the price-to-book ratio when determining the intrinsic value of a stock. Even more recently in Berkshire's 2018 annual report, Buffett said he's finally abandoning the practice of highlighting the book value per share to investors. And the reasons for doing this discussed in the annual letter are very similar to those shown in the clip in 1995. As Buffett mentioned, successful companies that are able to effectively reallocate capital within their own business are likely to see both their market value and intrinsic value grow at rates faster than their book value, which is an accounting value that may have reduced significance over time for companies with a long and successful operating history. Now, given Buffett's comments, does this mean that book value is not a useful metric for us and other investors? The answer to that question is no, because some investors, including Buffett's mentor, Benjamin Graham, have found a tremendous amount of success using book value or variations of book value as a key metric for identifying the intrinsic value of stocks. Benjamin Graham was known for developing a specific type of value investing technique called net-net. Instead of book value, which looks at total company assets minus total liabilities, Graham valued companies based solely on their net current assets. 
current assets being assets expected to be converted to cash within one year. Graham would add up all of the cash on the company's books and any cash they were expected to receive in the next year, as well as adding in the current discounted value of the inventory or products held for sale at liquidation values. Adding that sum together gives you the current assets and then subtracting the total liabilities gives you the net net value. This metric worked exceptionally well for Graham, particularly in an era where financial information was much less accessible than it is today. Using this net net valuation technique, Graham was able to consistently buy companies that were trading at a discount to the net liquid assets that the company had. Going back to Buffett's clip and his comments on Graham, net net investing and other styles of investing that make use of book value related metrics can still be and are effective for investing smaller sums of money. However, when you get to the size of Berkshire Hathaway and they have billions of dollars to invest, there simply isn't the volume of these opportunities needed to make a significant difference in Berkshire's investment performance. Warren Buffett, who in his early days also used Graham's net-net valuation technique, called this particular type of value investing the cigar butt approach. The idea is that buying these stocks is like finding a mostly smoked, discarded cigar. Buffett said that though the stub may be ugly and soggy, the puff would be pure profit. Once that momentary pleasure was enjoyed, however, no more could be expected. So in Buffett's initial remarks to the question of determining intrinsic value, you get a sense of both Buffett's investment style as well as that of his mentor, Benjamin Graham. Both were tremendously successful, which can leave the investor wondering exactly what is the best method for valuing stocks. And with that, Buffett transitions into his three key investment principles, which if you practice and follow diligently, will lead you to investment success. The first of those key principles discussed is attitude towards the market. With that, Buffett specifically points out chapter eight of The Intelligent Investor, also written by his mentor, Benjamin Graham, as a detailed explanation for this principle. I highly recommend if you haven't, take some time to read that chapter over, but here are some of the key highlights. First, Graham begins by making sure it's crystal clear to investors that they must be comfortable with the fact that the market will swing over time. He mentions that swings may be as high as 50% increases from a stock's lowest price and 33% decreases of the stock's highest price at various points over the next five years. Again, these levels of price swings aren't unusual, they're to be expected. Those stock quotations should be there to be taken advantage of by investors, not the other way around. To clarify this, I'll read one paragraph from that chapter eight, which was highlighted by the editor as likely being the single most significant passage in the entire book. That paragraph begins, note this important fact. The true investor scarcely is ever forced to sell his shares, and at all other times, he's free to disregard the current price quotation. He need pay attention to it and act upon it only to the extent that it suits his book and no more. In this case, only to the extent that it suits his book means only to the extent that the price is favorable enough to justify selling the stock. Thus, the investor who permits himself to be stampeded or unduly worried by unjustified market declines in his holdings is perversely transforming his basic advantage into a basic disadvantage. That man would be better off if his stocks had no market quotation at all, for he would then be spared the mental anguish caused to him by other person's mistakes of judgment. That paragraph alone will more than pay for the price of the book. Now as investors, you can apply this concept to your own stocks and portfolio by being mentally prepared in advance for significant and oftentimes unjustified price fluctuations. Remember the stock quotations are there for you to take advantage of as an investor and not the other way around. If short-term market pessimism pushes a stock below what you think it's worth, then you could take advantage of that opportunity by purchasing shares in that company. The person you will be buying those shares from is someone who wasn't prepared for the fluctuations in price and is currently selling simply because other investors are selling as well. Now, of course, there are some price declines and fluctuations that may be justified. However, when you take the long-term view of investing, much of these price fluctuations are simply short-term noise. The second of Buffett's three key investing principles is to invest with a margin of safety. It should be fully understood by investors that a stock's price is not necessarily equivalent to the stock's value. This gets to the intrinsic value of a stock, which is the value based on a fundamental analysis without regard to the current stock price. The key to investing with a margin of safety is that once you've done an analysis of the stock price and determined a fair range estimate of an intrinsic value, you want to buy stocks that are trading currently below that intrinsic value. The difference between the temporarily depressed price 
and the stock's true intrinsic value is your margin of safety. The larger your margin of safety, the less risk there is of principal loss in the long term, and also then the higher potential of future returns from that point onward. We often hear low risk, low reward, and high risk, high reward, but investing with a margin of safety is where you can get the best of both worlds, low risk with high potential rewards. The most important and also most difficult part of this strategy is being patient to wait for a sufficient margin of safety before you buy. Once you own the stock, you have a couple options. If, for instance, you see one of those stock price fluctuations to the upside and the company temporarily trades above your intrinsic value, you could potentially sell the stock to secure those profits and reduce the then now elevated risk of holding a stock that appears to be temporarily overvalued. On the other hand, if you're comfortable waiting out price fluctuations, you can simply continue to hold your position for the long term and let it continue to compound and grow over time. This decision might in part depend on the quality of the business, in which companies with competitive advantages are better suited for long-term holding periods. And Buffett's third and final key investing principle is to look at stocks as businesses. This is a long-term oriented perspective. If you start to think about stocks like businesses, you're going to be less concerned with short-term price movements and more focused on long-term business prospects and performance. Rather than primarily focusing on the risks of the stock, you focus more of your attention to the risks of the business. On the stock side of things, Buffett couldn't care less if the stock he was buying had a volatile price, provided he's still paying below his estimates of intrinsic value. In fact, he likely prefers volatility over stable prices as that gives him more potential investment opportunities. Instead of worrying about the stock price, Buffett is focused on the business and business risk, and this is something that you can also apply to your own stocks and investments. Specifically, in assessing business risk, Buffett will be asking questions like, is the company capitalized in a way that puts the company at risk to creditors? Is the management team strong and aligned with shareholder interests? Does the company have a lasting competitive advantage or economic moat that protects it from competition? Buffett has done well and you will do better off as an investor to think about the business more before investing it or selling it off. And the final bonus point that Buffett provides is that following these three principles, it doesn't necessarily matter what exact valuation technique you use. Regardless if an investor is using more of Graham's net net style of value investing or taking the Buffett approach of trying to buy wonderful businesses at fair prices, as long as you follow these three core principles, it's unlikely for anything to go seriously wrong. Having the appropriate attitude towards the stock market controls your emotions and prevents you from making serious investment mistakes. Investing with a margin of safety helps limit your downside risk and subsequently also helps improve your long-term returns. And looking at stocks as businesses gives you a long-term perspective and can help you build a portfolio of strong businesses with promising long-term prospects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, leaving a like is a great way to show your support and definitely helps out the channel. And if you're new here, subscribe for more investment content like this in the future. Until then, my name is Michael. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.